So good day guys, in this class, we are going to be talking about the phasor diagram of an end condenser transmission line. Because we know that in medial transmission line, there are three um, methods of representing the psychic model of a medial transmission line. And the first one is end condenser. The second one is um, C method or split method. And the third one is nominal pi method. So the first one is um, end condenser. And an end condenser is a representation where the capacitor is at the end of the transmission line. So the end then condenser. Condenser also means capacitor. So if we have the transmission line like we have um, something like this. There is the resistance and this is the inductance. Then this will be the capacitance of the line. Then this will be the voltage. This will be the load. Then this will be Vx. Vx means sending voltage. Guys, the voltage you put into the line. So the current that will be uh, this will be Ix. The current that will be flowing here will be Ix. Then the current that will flow through here is called Ic. That is current that flows through the capacitance. Then this point will be I arrow, right? I arrow. So the voltage you have here is the sending voltage, it's called Vs. And the voltage we have here is voltage according to the arrow, right? So we can now draw for the end condenser metal. Now we have here arrow, right? And we have here X, that is resistance and inductance. So let's begin to see what we can do. Because we know in the first class of short transmission line, we have V arrow, Vx in this line, right? We have Vx in this line. Then we now have I arrow at the horizontal, horizontally straight. This is Ix. But in this case now, why we won't have Ix to be horizontally straight is because Ix is not one component. Ix has been split according to this diagram into two parts. We have I arrow and Ic. So it cannot be in a horizontal form, right? Rather, we will represent it into its vector component. So this is how we do it. Because Is now is equal to I arrow and Ic. So we know that we are representing it vectorially. So I arrow and Ic will give us Ix, right? So we have an angle bending to this side. Then this is Ix, right? Now this Ix is made up of two components. The first one is Ic. We call this one Ic. And the other one is I arrow. So I arrow will be like this. I arrow. Right? So that the resultant of Ic and I arrow will give us Ix. According to this formula. Right? So now this Vx now. This Vs. This is Vx. This Vs is equal to the voltage drop along the line, which is the voltage drop along this side, plus the voltage across the transmission line. So it means that Vx is equal to voltage drop along this line, which is the sum of inductors and resistance, is same thing as Iz, right? Plus V arrow. Are we getting it now? Now. So this point now, this will be V arrow, right? So that the sum of V arrow and I Z, so this will be I Z, we give us, so the sum of these two components, V arrow, I Z, we give us what? V <coughs> S. Uh, According to our normal vector addition. Okay, let's continue. Now, Okay, because of the space of my screen, I'm limited to some things. But from here now, we now know that we now know. I get it now that I Z also is equal to two components. You know, these all about trigonometry and vectors. I Z, I X Z, 
is equal to two components. That is I R O because there is resistance plus I X inductance, right? So now we know that resistance don't lack current or don't need current. It's it just follows the current. So it will be on a straight line. So that means that I R O will be on a straight line with respect to this I Z. So this I Z now is composed of I R O which is on a straight line. This will be I R O, right? Then I X we know that reactance will lead current by 90, right? So it means that reactance will be up, then current will be down. So this is the reactance component. So this side will be up. So we now have reactance being at the upside. Are we getting it now? So this is the reactance I X. So if we can follow this very carefully, it means that we are through drawing the phasor diagram of a end condenser metal. So let's talk about the angle. The angle now, now listen very carefully. We will take V arrow, I get it, as the reference fizzle. What do we mean by reference fizzle? When we talk about um, reference fizzle, okay, with time it will be more clearer as we go on. But what you should understand as the reference fizzle is that, for example, now you see that Vx is like coming from. If you go up from V arrow, you will see Vs, right? Then if you go down from V arrow also, you will see Ix. So like V arrow is like a reference point to other components. Are, are we getting it now? Are we getting it? Okay, so uh, we can think in terms of that explanation as reference fizzle. Now, let's talk about the angles. The angle between Vx and Ix is called... Theta s that is this angle between this vx and this i x is called what theta s so space will not allow me to write theta s so i can just indicate it with another color and put it here like this so this is theta x as it is in your book then the angle between v arrow and i arrow this is v arrow v arrow right and i arrow the angle between this place is called theta arrow are we getting it now let me use another color to indicate it it's called what theta arrow now another thing you should note is the angle between v arrow and the immediate left line v arrow and the immediate left line after the arrow which immediate which is the immediate next line we have ix right because this ix to the downside is the immediate left line. It's called theta. It's called theta two, right? So, and the angle between this same V arrow and the upper next line is called. I know a lot of. It's not that arranged, but because please. So this angle is called theta one. So this is how we represent the phasor diagram of an end condenser transmission line in case you have any problem you can drop it on the comment section below so that we can know how we make the explanation more clearer thank you very much for watching god bless you have a nice day